Namaste. So I thought I'd make a short video to just catch everybody up on what's happening. <laughs> Our matrix learning course is going very well. We've wound up with 12 sadhakas and most of them have uh, completed the first section already. A couple haven't shown up. I don't know what's going on. I tried to contact them, but anyway, so we have a nice group and they're getting it. This is a much better group than that we had in the spring when we tried this before. And I think there are two reasons for that. One is that we ask for a donation of $51 or euros or whatever. <laughs> and so the people who come, the freeloaders, you know, who don't want to contribute anything, don't show up because of that friction, that, that uh, qualification that's necessary. So we've got a bunch of very highly motivated people who value the teachings much more. Now, the next thing is going to be, they're going to go into the process of duplication, which is really hard. <laughs> we'll see how they do. Because you have to change your being. You have to reach deep into the mind and redefine all your words and everything. It's, it's a tough process. But those who go through it get tremendously increased comprehension. So you might notice I haven't posted any videos on spiritual teachings lately. And there's a reason for that. The reason is I feel like I said everything that I can say publicly. Now, there's a lot more that can only be shared between me and someone who becomes a real disciple. But those t people haven't shown up yet. <laughs> so right now, all we have going is the online course, which is very satisfying for me. Because I get to interact directly over Skype, you know, but still, it's a real-time interaction. It's much more satisfying than posting a video and then watching all the lame comments, <laughs> looking for those one or two comments that are actually germane and that forward the discussion. So the real-time interaction over video conferencing is much more satisfying to me, and we're going to be doing a lot more of that. But the other thing that's happening is I'm getting back into music. You know, this spiritual quest that I've been on most of my life really started back in days of my youth as a quest to understand how music works. Why does music affect people emotionally? And how does it do it? And how can that be made into a more scientific uh, discipline rather than just, you know, art? <laughs> so, you know me, I like to poke under the hood and see how everything works. I'm not content with dogma. I want real understanding. So none of my music teachers in college could answer my questions. When I say, how does music affect people emotionally? We know that it does, but how? How does it work? And, and this was sparked by a very interesting experience. In my senior year of college, I had po uh, composed a piano suite. I think it was four movements, piano suite. Unfortunately, the score got lost. Uh, my van was robbed while I was in a gig in Colorado Springs and all the manuscripts went with it. But anyway, this four movements ended up with a takata. A takata is a touch piece. Huh? Ding, 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 ding. And it got really wild at the end with like multiple glissandos and tone clusters. and I mean, it was really wild, really contemporary. And the funny thing is, at the very end of the piece, everybody in the audience laughed. 
huh? It was really a while. And, and these were like, you know, the judges of the composition contest that I was entered in. These are like doctors, you know, PhDs in music, right? <laughs> And they were laughing at the end of hearing this piece. Of course, I got a top prize. The poor pianist, though, <laughs> she thought they were laughing at her. And so she stormed off the stage and barricaded herself in a practice room. Would never speak to me again. <laughs> but anyway, this piece, of course, was a serious piece of music, right? It wasn't supposed to make you laugh. Why? Why did that happen? None of my professors could explain this to me. But years later, when I met my Indian music teacher, Ali Akbar Khan, I asked him the same question. And he immediately replied, oh, it's Rasa Tattva. It's Swara. <laughs> huh, what? <laughs> and then he proceeded to explain these terms to me. And from this was born a quest into the Vedic scriptures for the truth behind everything. And I can say after 50 years now, <laughs> that question is fully answered, fully complete. Not only how does music affect people, but how can we make music that affects people in the most beneficial possible way? And you know, you've heard, if you've been hanging out in this channel, you've heard my small compositions as lead-ins to some of the videos. And I think I posted one flute raga, you know, that is uh, in the Vedic mood. But actually, I want to do so much more than that. So about two years ago, I had a, a nice MacBook. Oh, and if, yeah, if you watch the... Um, Ribu Gita series, it has background music. The only videos I ever made with background music. And this background music was composed and mixed and everything on my MacBook Pro. Well, shortly after that, my MacBook Pro died and the parts are no longer made, no longer available. So I couldn't get it fixed. I had to let it go. And it's been two years since I had a, really an adequate computer. I've been using iPads. And the iPad, iPad Pro especially, is, well, you know, it works. <laughs> it does everything. But really, it's like a toy compared to the MacBook Pro. And especially the Pro-level software, like Logic, the music composition software, and... Final Cut Pro, the uh, video editing suite. So anyway, I finally broke down the other day and ordered the latest MacBook Pro 2020 edition. And uh, it should have adequate performance to do all the stuff that I want to do. So why did I do that? Well, it's a matter of the heart. You know, even though I talk a blue streak on these videos, I'm really not such a, like, rational, verbal type person. I'm actually much more of an intuitive, heart type person. Huh? I found it necessary for the purposes of my heart to expound and express and analyze and trace out everything in connection with my primary purpose, uh -huh. which is to compose music that has the optimum possible effect on people. But now that's done, you know, it's done, 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 done. When it's done, it's done. So I've given everything that I can share publicly, you know, without having a direct interaction, being in the energy field of another person. Uh, a sadhu, someone who is inquiring, an aspirant for liberation, for enlightenment. I've done everything I can do, you know. 
Now it's up to you guys to understand all that and to approach me in a proper way so that I can really help you. Huh? All this so far has just been the introduction. <laughs> anyway, as far as myself is concerned, I've got a bunch of music that I want to write, that I have wanted to write for a long, long time. It's just sitting there waiting for me to draw it down and put it into the machine and make it happen. So I'm going to be concentrating over the next weeks and months on my musical composition. And that's going to be, uh, well, it's not sadhana exactly. I've done my sadhana. I got the result and I'm very happy with it. But <laughs> it's just, just going to be my fun, you know, just expressing my being, who I really am, you know. And so uh, then that brings up the question, well, what is this music going to be like? What is it going to sound like? What style is it going to be? And of course, it's not going to be any particular style. I'm very eclectic and I draw musical uh, elements from everywhere. Although if you would pin me down on it, I'd have to say my favorite of all is Debussy, Ravel, the Impressionists, Mazorksky, like that. Uh, after them, music got a little too uh, dissonant, like Stravinsky and people like that. Um, they're, they're really into, too much into, say, you know, breaking forms, iconoclasm. And I'm not into breaking forms. I'm into making forms harmonious, even though they may come from widely different uh, sources. But really the main criterion of spiritual music is that it should be beautiful. See, just like the main criterion of any kind of sadhana, whether you're doing a puja or you're uh, chanting a mantra or you're meditating or something like that, it should be beautiful. If it becomes a grind, if it becomes, you know, a dull routine, something that you really don't look forward to, it means you're off. You've done something wrong. You've taken a wrong turn somewhere on the path. You've gotten into routine rather than discovery. Because sadhana and all of its parts should be a discovery of the spiritual a discovery of God within oneself. So, of course, this is going to be beautiful, right? <laughs> this is going to be amazing. It's going to be wonderful, and it's going to lead to all kinds of surprising, amazing things if you're doing it right. So should the music be. Number one, it should be beautiful. That's why I'm I'm going to use a lot of, you know, Debussy ninth chord harmonies with a lot of substitute diminished and whole tone scales and, you know, stuff like that. For those of you who are a little bit musically inclined. Uh, and it's going to be slow. It's going to be meditative, except when it's not. <laughs> yeah, there are going to be parts that are passionate. Because especially when experiencing the joy that results from spiritual realization, you want to sing and dance and jump and run. <laughs> so it's going to have its passionate moments, but mostly it's going to be slow, contemplative, and really as far as gorgeous as far as possible. So that's the one thing. So what, what does that say in terms of a musical language? Well, it conjures up the orchestra. Because in the orchestra, you have the most widely varied palette of musical ingredients. Uh, it's just like a well-stocked kitchen. Huh? You have your grains, your spices, and your different 
oils and your different means of cooking and so on, and you want to cook up something absolutely delicious that has a pleasing texture as well. So, of course, there are synthesizers, and I'm going to be using synths a lot. But, you know, most of the synthesizer sounds, especially in the recent trends in like hip hop and house and um, dubstep and like that, they have a lot of kind of grinding, kind of buzzing, kind of irritating sounds. Uh, I guess if someone needs that kind of stimulation to wake up, <laughs> you know, they're going to want that kind of growling kind of stuff. And yeah, well, there's going to be some growling sounds in my work too, but they're going to be very spare. They're not going to be the main course. They're going to be the spicy side dish, huh? Or maybe the dessert. <laughs> They're not going to be the main thing, because the main thing should be oceanic. I want to make big spaces. There's a tool in the Logic Pro that's called Space Designer, and that's exactly what it does. <laughs> it allows you to make big, big spaces. And so the music is going to take place in a kind of outdoor ambience kind of like nature's concert hall. And it's going to be, like I said, orchestral with a dash of this and that. <laughs> Sometimes it'll zoom in on a small ensemble of instruments. Sometimes it'll zoom out and be the whole kit and caboodle, you know, major orchestral arrangements and stuff like that. Um, so this is the kind of music it's, it's going to be. And the thing is, I hear this music in my dreams, you know, because of doing a lot of work with the uh, trans, or uh, moving between the different states of consciousness, like waking and dreaming and deep sleep and so on. I've been very lucid in my dreams. And I often have dreams where I hear this music and the music, for those, again, who know music, it sounds like pop strings run through uh, a compressor with a lot of overdrive. <laughs> it's a unique sound, and you're going to be hearing that a lot. And especially you're going to be hearing uh, strings and flute, because I just got a nice new flute, really cool black flute with uh, brass keys and a you kind of unique instrument. So this is going to be uh, the main course. Oh, now look, the time has slipped away from me and I went long. I was trying to make it short, but hey, what to do? I'm just waiting for the computer to arrive and when it does, I'm going to make an unboxing video and you'll get to see it fire up for the first time and everything. So, I wish you all the best. Please take advantage of our extensive library of videos and educate yourself. Beginning from the earliest series, the earliest uh, playlists on our playlist tab, and then up towards the latest ones, because the latest the, the later videos build on the earlier ones and they actually are required to understand everything that we say in the later works. So now it's time to worship the goddess. The temple bell is ringing. <laughs> I'm going to go and uh, do a little kirtan. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.